Southampton by two goals to one. Watford's first goal coming after a... Well, it's a very warm welcome back to second half independent off tube studio commentary. It's the game at St. Mary's where what, uh, Southampton trail Watford by uh, two goals to one. And uh, Southampton already making a change at the start of the uh, second half, going very attacking with Will Smallbone uh, being replaced uh, by Armando Brogia. So this will probably mean that Stuart Armstrong drops into midfield and uh, Brogia will go up front. And we both thought uh, uh, before the break that Southampton needed a little bit of something extra uh, up front. And now, of course, they've got that goal back. So it really does mean that they have got that incentive to go forward. And we should see an excellent second half. It's myself, Paul Shabakovic and uh, uh, Sam Wright taking you through the action and Sam, that's a, a positive change there from Hart and Hoodle. Yeah, definitely. I said in the first half, I feel like Amanda Rizzi is the man to come on and change this game. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, he had a uh, I think in the f in the first half they you know they got back into the game at the end of it so he could have stayed with the uh, so with the same 11, obviously, with the scoreline being 2-1, but I think Broch is a great player to bring on. He will cause Watford troubles, no doubt about that and uh, yeah, see if they can bring it back. Now, Sam, to put a goal on half-time for me, that's a huge momentum shifter and I think Watford are going to have to fend very resolutely in this second half. Particularly early on I think the first 15 minutes of this second half will be crucial if, uh, if Watford can just take the sting out of Southampton's early attack as they look to try and equalise early on and then it gives uh, Watford uh, half a chance of, of three points that at one stage in the first half look very safe with that 2-0 lead and then that great one-on-one -on -one chance for uh, Uri Kuchka which was uh, saved by the, uh, the feet of uh, Fraser Forster but it's Southampton on the attack they won themselves a throw uh, down on the right hand side and Mohamed Salisu is across uh, to take this one he's going to try and launch this one as close to the six yard box as he can he's beckoning his players to uh, get as close to the uh, ball as he can as he launches that it's over the head of Bednarek and it just flicks off Kuchka and it's out for a corner I'll just to run through the Southampton side quickly before we see this corner Fraser Forster is in goal with the back four of Kyle Walker-Peters Jan Bednarek Mohamed Salisu and Romain Perot four in midfield of uh, uh, Stuart Armstrong, James Ward-Prowse, Oriol Romeo, and Mohamed Elanoussi with Armando Broja coming on for Will Smallburn. He joins Shea Adams up front. The corner kick is whipped in. It's headed straight out for another corner. Yes, yeah, Cavasele there. We've got a touch on it, actually. Quite an uh, important one. I think, again, Ward-Prowse, every time he has delivery, it's going to cause issues. And I think we just saw that one again. So straight away, let's say, I think it's vital they make it through this first 15 minutes, Watford. But it's about with another corner here. Outswinger from Ward Prowse, a little bit low this time and easily headed away uh, by João Pedro. The ball in midfield flicked on and that could be a, a free kick and a booking as well here. Watford will be saying that this is potentially a counter-attack being stopped. It's still inside the uh, Watford half but uh, referee Graham Scott is in no doubt and we see our first yellow card of the afternoon. It's for Romain Perot. Yeah, definitely a yellow there, of course. He is stopping a counter-attack. I just see Perot here. I think it's a bit unfortunate. He goes in with his head, really, doesn't he? And I think he's trying to get there, but he just gets beaten to the ball by um, Kuchka. And then I think that obviously allows, just gives him an invitation to go down. Sorry, my apologies. It was actually a loser who uh, got there first, I believe. But in the end, Perot uh, ends up bringing him down a bit, unfortunate. But yeah, definitely a yellow card. He is stopping a counter. He is. It's a free kick taken uh, by Ben Foster. The Watford uh, 11, no change at half-time. So it is Ben Foster in goal, a back four of Kiko Feminia, Christian Cabasele, Samir and Hassane Kamara. Three in midfield, Musa Sissoko, Imran Luza and Yurai Kuchka with uh, Kuko, Fernande, uh, Kuko Hernandez, João Pedro and Emmanuel Dennis as uh, the uh, three up front. It's uh, a ball now over the top here from Kamara looking uh, for uh, Hernandez at the edge of the area. Cleared back into midfield but another chance here potentially for Watford. It's kept alive by their captain Musa Sissoko. Goes back towards the halfway line here for uh, Cabasele. And he tries a long ball over the top, which is eventually cut out by Elanusi. He then runs straight into Kuchka. A bit of a mess here for Southampton at the edge of the area. Kuchka still charging forward, runs into Salisu. And then the ball then fortuitously deflects back towards uh, Fraser Forster. And here comes Southampton now down the right-hand side with uh, uh, Walker-Peters. He then finds uh, Brozier back inside uh, towards uh, Ward-Prowse. Watford, though, flooding that midfield, just trying to uh, slow down uh, any progress uh, from uh, Southampton. Uh, they're pretty much underway in all the uh, second halves across the two o'clock. Because apart from at uh, the London Stadium, where they had uh, five or even six minutes of injury time, so it's still half time between West Ham and Villa. Uh, all the other games uh, are underway. Just to remind you the scores it is goalless between Chelsea and Newcastle, goalless between Everton and Wolves. It's Leeds 1 and Norwich 0. And uh, it is goalless between West Ham and Villa as well as Arsenal and Leicester City to come at uh, 4.30 this afternoon as uh, Bednarek now brings the ball out for uh, Southampton, runs straight into Emmanuel Dennis, who uh, keeps the ball in play, but then's uh, robbed of possession by uh, Walker-Peters. 
who goes back towards uh, Fraser Forster. And uh, I suppose from uh, Watford's point of view, th- th- this is the big dilemma for them because they conceded late on in that first half. They don't really want to be sitting back from the 45th minute onwards, but at the same time, if they commit too many men forward, they could be caught out at the back as well. Yeah, I think it's a balancing act for both teams, really. Obviously, Southampton at the same time, if they commit too many men forward in search of an equaliser, Watford can hit them on the break as they have done a couple of times already in the game. But obviously for Watford, they do want to defend, but they've also got to make sure they do break forward when they can and give that defence some rest but uh, another long throw coming in by Salisa and I do think Watford are going to be under pressure for the majority of this second half That's certainly what uh, Harsen Hootel will be hoping for as a good long throw there from Salisu launched into the box eventually hooked away by João Pedro after an initial header from Samir it's out for a throw to Southampton but this time it's closer to the halfway line so uh, uh, not even Rory Delap could get to the, the ball into the box from this sort of distance it's just going to be a uh, Perot uh, taking a short throw meanwhile we've got a bit of a, a stoppage here as Musa Sissoko is uh, down on his haunches. Watford captain just looks to be a little bit dazed there. Referee Graham Scott uh, just uh, checking in, but it looks like everything's fine with the big man. Yes, yeah, Sissoko, obviously such an important player for Watford. He is, of course, their skipper as well, so they'll really be open. He can stay fit. I mean, of course, Sissoko has experience being in a relegation battle before. He was, of course, relegated with Newcastle back in 2016, but he's a much different player now, and I think he's vital to this Watford team. He is the driving force in midfield, so he's, he's massive. He stays fit. Absolutely, yes. A big, big player is uh, throw on now to uh, Southampton down the uh, right right hand side 51 minutes gone independent off chief judo commentary a uh, scoreline from the first half still the same it's uh, Southampton 1 Watford 2 ball played uh, forward now towards Shea Adams he runs uh, straight into uh, Kamara there I thought that might have been a foul uh, in favour of uh, Watford referee Graham Scott was very close to it Kamara is still down on the ground and uh, we're still playing on here as uh, Stuart Armstrong is there are two Watford players down on the ground now referee still allowing play to go on and uh, here comes uh, Walker Peters now down the right hand side good strong challenge and the ball is uh, kept in play a chance here now for Watford to go on a counter attack although the pass forward is uh, a little bit uh, under hit in the end and it's uh, Romeo now bringing the ball out uh, for Southampton but uh, yeah, I was a bit surprised there I thought I mean the referee has only now just stopped play uh, and that's actually for a, an injury to a Southampton player, even though at one stage we had two Watford players down. Yeah, I think uh, he's on the floor for a while, wasn't he, Kamara, really? And the referee, obviously, it's not a head injury, doesn't have to stop it, but there was not really much complaints about what the players are putting the ball out either. That's why it was so confusing. And in the end, of course, I thought they said it was a foul in the end. Just saw Walker Peters be challenged there quite uh, li- He does win the ball, but then go over the top of it. So we've had a few players to go down in the last couple of moments. And he's actually still down at the floor, actually, I believe, there as well. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, a little bit of a mess all Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of uh, stoppage, uh, stoppage time here just to try and uh, get all this uh, sorted out in the meantime. Meantime, Connor Cody, the scouser, has gone back to Liverpool and given Wolves the lead away at uh, Everton. And that's after uh, our colleagues who were commentating on that game said that Everton actually had the better of the first half. So uh, that's a big, big goal. And Everton look bang in trouble right now. They do, yeah. I mean, big goal for Wolves. I mean, Everton, they do have the games in hand, but I think the points on the board are more important. The way Everton are playing, can we see them getting them points on the board? So that's good news for Watford as well, of course, because they're obviously leading this game still. I just uh, had a look at the replay, by the way. Definitely a foul by Che Adams and Kamara. I can't believe that. I, I, I didn't thought that it. he re ran into Kamara, and it seemed to me like it was, uh, it was a clear free kick, which wasn't then given, and then play was allowed to go on, and eventually it was uh, Walker Peters uh, who went down, and that's actually why the referee stopped play. Uh, Kamara has been checked over now he's on the touchline ready to come back on Walker Peters has only just got up and he's now on the touchline as well uh, so we should have a play restarted soon I think this is is this Southampton giving the ball back to no the, this is just the referee uh, going to have a drop ball I'm interested to see who the drop ball is going to be for I think it was uh, Southampton in possession at the time although Sissoko still asking the question about uh, who's going to get the ball back uh, Kamara is uh, ok ready to uh, come back on the field now drop ball here for Mohamed Salisu and uh, play uh, back underway here James Ward-Prowse now switching play over towards the uh, right hand side and so uh, that one uh, goes out of play Kuchka did Kuchka get a touch on that if he did then he's given the ball away that should have just been out for a throw to Watford it, I think he did get a touch looking at it he went across trying to control the ball and miscontrolled it and that allowed it to run out of play so a uh, poor ball from Ward Prowse actually has turned into a, a Southampton throw but on this occasion they've taken it short they have taken it short and they've gone all the way back to the halfway line now Bednanik square to Romeo Romeo square to Salisu he's been closed down here by Hernandez who's of course uh, hunting for his hat-trick now and uh, the ball played back towards uh, goalkeeper uh, Foster Clear, uh, Forster cleared up towards the halfway line headed forward uh, by Bednarik ball drops uh, straight through to Samir he finds uh, Sissoko does really well to turn away uh, from uh, Ward-Prowse and then he finds Kiko Femenia down the uh, right hand side 
Uh, for me, and now towards uh, Hernandez, back towards Sissoko. Two Southampton players on him, and he eventually goes uh, back towards Cabaselli, who then plays it uh, square to Samir. But uh, you certainly can't fault the energy levels of both of these sides. Uh, both uh, both sets of players know that the next goal in this game is crucial. And uh, here comes uh, Watford now. Good run this from Jao Pedro. Tries to flick it up over Salisu. Goes down in the deck. The referee immediately says no penalty. I'm not sure it was as uh, clear cut as that. I thought there might have been a question mark over it, but of course, VAR. Uh, can have a quick look now as we play on. The ball goes out of play for a uh, throw to Southampton. Brilliant play, though, by Jao Pedro. The way he takes the ball in there, he does really well. Up against Romeo as well, who obviously is a very good holding midfielder. He gets beyond him, flicks it past Salisu. Oh, there's not enough contact there. The there isn't. There isn't. Right. I mean, it, he's he's hit the deck as if Salisu's pushed him in the back. If if you can see, if you remember the uh, the penalty that Brentford got last uh, yesterday against Burnley, that was Collins uh, shoving Tony in the back. Perhaps shoving was a bit uh, strong, but it was push, a push in the back. On that occasion, uh, Jao Pedro hit the deck as if he'd been pushed in the back, but actually Salisa was stood side on. So now I think that uh, having just seen that one replay, we can both uh, decide that that wasn't a penalty. And it's a throw to Watford now down the uh, right-hand side. But it's it's been a while now since Southampton have had any kind of pressure in front of the Watford goal. Yeah, I think the breaking play has kind of suited Watford. I mean, we've only we've got under, uh, back underway for around about a minute, but it seems like Watford have had the possession. Just want to say about Jao Pedro there. I think if he stays on his feet, he might actually have a chance to get the ball there and take on a shot. So if he has gone down cheaply and looked for a penalty, you've got to ask why. Why hasn't he tried to carry on, take it past Elisu and try and score? I think that you can see why he's looked for a penalty. But yeah, I think if he should have maybe tried to stay on his feet if, if he didn't feel any contact. Yeah, I think so. I think he's probably... Uh, well, uh, here we see uh, Mohamed Salisu now. He's gone down holding his face. He feels as though Jao Pedro has, has hit him. The referee, I don't think he's too bothered about this, uh, Graham Scott. It looked to me as though Salisu who was uh, indicating a facial injury and then within uh, a few seconds he just uh, got up again Graham Scott I think just to make a point there did, he didn't have to do that drop ball really Southampton were already in possession but I think he did that just to make a point that Salisu was uh, indicating a head injury and then miraculously uh, cured a couple of seconds later uh, meanwhile it is uh, Southampton in possession now with uh, Romeo who's uh, dropped almost into a centre-back position here, plays the ball out towards uh, Walker-Peters down the right-hand side. He tries to play it over Kamara. Wasn't able to do that, though, and Samir now uh, brings the ball out uh, for uh, Watford. Here's João Pedro. Runs uh, straight into three Southampton players, though, and now it's the Saints uh, going forward here with Romain Perrault. Just inside the uh, centre circle, looks up and sees options down the left-hand side, and he's overhit that pass. No chance for Elanusi to get on the end of that one. And uh, ball cleared down the uh, right-hand side. Salisu just about uh, gets Southampton uh, back into possession uh, with João Pedro lurking. And here is uh, Stuart Armstrong. Now he's had a very quiet game so far as the uh, Scotland international square now to uh, James Ward-Prowse. Uh, back to uh, Stuart Armstrong. Perot is up there for support as well on the overlap. That's where the ball has gone. Armstrong then range forward, but uh, Perot chooses to ignore him and go back towards Salisu. Back in defensive midfield. Southampton have men forward, but they just can't find a route to go. It's gone all the way back to the halfway line now here for Romeo. And he goes uh, towards Armstrong, who has a bit more space down the left-hand side this time. Cuts into the middle. He's got three players ahead of him. Tries to find a ball to Walker-Peters. It's a great ball as well. Perhaps just a little bit too much bounce on it. So Walker-Peters at full speed. Couldn't quite play it square, but it was certainly the right idea. Brilliant ball too, Walker-Peters. They say he gets in behind there. Like I say, just a little bit on the stretch. Armstrong's had a really quiet game, Stuart Armstrong. That's a great ball. Just gets in behind. But yeah, I think it's just a bit too much on it. And by the time he gets there, Walker-Peters, he's running too fast. Therefore, he can't control the cross really but that's promising from Southampton the first we've really seen from them going forward for a little while but I mean obviously Bro just come on and barely touched the ball really surprisingly so well, he's, not, he's not had the service has he that's, that's the whole point is that uh, the Southampton haven't really been able to get into the sort of attack mode the first couple of minutes of the second half you felt was alright they're just going to carry on where they left off uh, at the end of the first half but it's not really been like that since then and Watford now seeing more of the ball in attack as the ball is put over towards uh, uh, Hernandez he then plays it square it's not too far away from Dennis and from João Pedro the attempted clear Clearance from Perot is charged down by Jao Pedro. Hernandez's ball into the box is cleared by Romeo. It's back into a midfield here with a loser. And he then goes back towards the halfway line for a Samir. But it's a lot more uh, composed and controlled from a Watford now. Uh, Kamara inside to loser playing a quick one two there with Kuchka down the left this looks good and loser now gets all the way to the byline puts a cross into the edge of the six yard box it's actually a little bit too high in the end and uh, hooked away uh, by Perot headed on there by Shea Adams on the halfway line and there's a foot race here which is going to be one in the end uh, by uh, Cabaselli credit to him he clears it towards the halfway line 
where Elanusi does well to get the ball away uh, from Hernandez. He may well have been uh, fouled there. The referee in the end wanted to play an advantage. Can't uh, give the advantage in the end. It's going to be a free kick. And it's also going to be a booking for Hernandez, which I think might be a little bit unlucky, but it, it might just be for the fact that he was trying to stop the run. The game really opening up, though. You saw them, Brozier. He is in that foot race for Cabaselli. And fair play to Cabaselli. He gets there first, does really well. But the game certainly opens up there. And as you say, it's that balancing act for the two teams, really. Watford, obviously, wanting to attack when they can, but still defend well. And Southampton just not committing too many bodies forward. But the game right now, though, is certainly opening up. And I think that um, more chances are going to come. More chances uh, potentially here as a free kick for Southampton. It's about 45 yards out. It's uh, uh, curled into the box by uh, Ward Prowse, quickly headed away. And now Watford looking to try and go on the counter. But in fairness, Southampton have backed very quickly to their uh, defensive position. So no chance for a quick counter. Uh, long clearance now over the top, headed forward by uh, Ward Prowse. And it is the home side back in possession. Uh, Armstrong finds uh, Romeo, And there's plenty of space here down the left here for Perot. If Romeo wants to find him, that's where the ball has gone. Uh, Perot at the edge of the area puts uh, cross in which uh, is just over the head of Brogy. He got, get, got ahead to it, but he couldn't have directed towards goal. And a very acrobatic overhead clearance there from Musa Sissoko. There's a man down inside the uh, Watford penalty area. We're playing on for the time being. Uh, referee Graham Scott isn't concerned, but now that Watford are in possession, he does stop play, which is uh, frustrating for the visitors. They're, they'll they'll say that if the referee was quite happy to allow a Southampton attack with their man down on the ground, he should have allowed the Watford attack to be played out as well. It's not a head injury either, Samir. Samir is not holding his head, so I don't see why the referees really had to stop that because Watford are three on three so the ball's played forward and the, and the whistle blows I think that's really really unfortunate for Watford it's just uh, the way he, it's an awkward landing he jumps for, for the header with Brozier and it's just the way he, he treads on his left uh, with his left foot there he just lands a bit awkwardly I don't think that as I say it, interesting I mean if Southampton had got into the box and taken a shot and scored then you'd imagine it would have stood. So on the same basis, the referee should have allowed, allowed play to go on there, really. I think that uh, uh, Sissoko and a couple of the other Watford players well within their rights to ask the referee about that he's one. He's actually OK as well. He's got straight up and he's actually back on his feet. So it's not like it's a delayed stoppage or anything. So I think they're very unlucky there, Watford, because yes. you see the frustration when the whistle blew. And I, I agree with them. Because if Southampton scored, it would have stood. Watford go on a counter and the referee blows. For me, he's well, got that wrong. It's a couple of times now that uh, Graham Scott has made a bit of a mess of uh, stopping play with, uh, with injuries. Of course, it is a hot topic in terms of head injuries and concussion, but and of course with everything that happened with uh, Christian Eriksen last summer. Uh, but in general terms, I think they were there the referee just needed to be a little bit uh, use his judgment a little bit better there. As uh, the ball is down the uh, right hand side, Brozier was fouled as he uh, tried to turn. It was uh, Samir uh, with the foul. So a free kick now to Southampton. Uh, still a quite a long way out chance though to get the ball into the box. Yeah, Adams there went down, obviously, and I think he was just trying to eventually get back to his feet, but a free kick's probably better, and Ward-Prowse, we know, you know, he's capable of delivering the ball from anywhere. It's a long way from goal, though. He's got to get some very good whip on this and distance Ward-Prowse, but we certainly know he's capable of doing that. Well, Ward-Prowse does put a bit of whip on this, uh, and it's uh, over towards Salisa with the header just wide. wasn't an easy uh, header to get, it wasn't an easy cross to get in, there because it had a lot of pace that uh, ball whipped in from uh, Ward-Prowse, but that's the third time this afternoon that Salisa's the one who's got on the end of a cross and that was probably the hardest one for him to actually get on the end of yeah he's, he's done the right thing he's jumped well it's just a little bit too far away from him to guide towards goal really if anything he's just got a touch on it but to get it on goal from there is very difficult because the ball's already going away from goal but I mean like you say he's, absolutely, well, he's got forward well from set pieces uh, Salisu I mean he's got up well he's, uh, his headers have unfortunately just not quite hit the mark but that's certainly a promising sign if Ward Prowse gets one right and Salisu could well be there to uh, turn it goalwards that was a good opportunity for Southampton. They, they need a few of those. They've just struggled to create the chances in the second half that I think Harsen Hootle would have expected after the way they ended the first. But now a ball over the top could have uh, proved to be uh, very costly for uh, Southampton. But Salisu does well with a defensive header this time just to make sure it doesn't get through towards uh, Kuko Hernandez. And uh, Salisu now toward Prowse. Looks as though Southampton have almost gone to a three at the back with Romeo, Salisu and Bednanik now as well. Romeo is very deep. He's deeper than his centre-backs right now, so that does tell me Romeo anyway usually is a deep-lying midfielder, but to go this deep, yeah, probably is saying something. Uh, he's certainly not someone who's going to drive forward, you'd say, but uh, no, I think that's an interesting tactic change there, and maybe that's what Hazard Newell's figuring at this point in the game, maybe use three at the back and bring on another attacker. Yeah, absolutely, and so, of course, uh, Romeo almost like a, a sweeper, which was a, a, a position that's pretty much completely gone out of fashion 
fashion, having been uh, used quite a lot in the 70s, 80s and, in, and into the 90s. But now it's Southampton on the attack with a cross coming in uh, towards uh, Walker Peters on the right-hand side. The ball is now swept away just a little bit too far away from Kuchka, but then he's taken out by Romeu. And considering what uh, Hernandez had got booked for a few moments earlier, I'm pretty sure that Romeu can't avoid a booking here. Yeah, I think it's just unfortunate there for Romeu. He's gone to get the ball, of course, and it just turns out that Kuchka's beaten him to it. He gets that touch first and he clatters right into him. And uh, yeah, it's the most, one of the most blatant yellow cards you're ever going to see for uh, for Romeu. But yeah, Kuchka just getting that first touch, obviously, he invites the foul. And that's exactly what Romeu does. And it's another booking. Another booking here. Yeah, they're starting to uh, add up now. That was the first booking for us, a uh, second booking for us, an Hampton player, I should say. Uh, Romeu and Perot, the two uh, home players booked. And it's uh, Hernandez, uh, the only uh, Watford player booked so far this afternoon. As uh, long clearance from that free kick, uh, hooked away from the edge of the Southampton penalty area uh, by Salisu. Uh, attempted slide tackle there uh, from Kamara. Doesn't uh, get the ball back for uh, Watford, but then a loose ball in midfield is controlled by Samir. A good turn from Sissoko. Runs straight into uh, Southampton uh, skipper James Ward-Prowse and eventually the Saints do have the ball back but still pressing here from Emmanuel Dennis and João Pedro right to the edge of the Southampton penalty area and uh, Forster's got to hurry up here. Does get his clearance away just before uh, João Pedro got there and then a good header out from uh, Kamara. Got to say that Watford are holding on to this lead and I'm not saying that they're, they're, they're clinging on to it but uh, they're looking organised in midfield so far. I think the more the game goes on the more Southampton will grow and have chances. I thought, you know, first 50 minutes, second half, Southampton will be throwing everything everything at Watford. It hasn't really been like that though in fairness to Watford. They've defended quite well. One thing you cannot fault what it, Watford for is the work rate. I think under Ranieri you watched them a lot and they weren't really working that hard for each other. It was all quite laboured. They've worked so hard this afternoon and uh, it's going to be a very hard earned three points and they can hang on. But as I said, I think Southampton, they're just going to keep coming forward. Yeah, the longer the game goes on with this scoreline, the more naturally Watford are going to be backing away and defending that box. They're already sitting a little bit deeper than they were at the start of the second half and you'd imagine that with every Five uh, ten minute increment is going to get even more. Uh, get, they're going to get even more uh, deep lying as uh, here comes Romeo now with a long ball looking for uh, Brozier. Brozier takes it down just at the edge of the six yard box. Cabaselli using all of his experience there though, just to sort of get his body in the way and then just guide the ball out for a corner kick. Made sure there was never any danger of a penalty either. That's what Brozier can do with service though. It's a good ball to him from Romeo. He takes it in well, but Cabaselli full credit. I think him and Samir have been brilliant so far. He does really well. Gets his body in front of him and puts it behind for a corner but that's just the danger that Broja can cause when the ball gets delivered into him absolutely it's Southampton's sixth corner kick of the game towards the edge of the six yard box Adams was waiting but uh, Kamara gets there first and then uh, Hernandez can't quite start the counter attack uh, for Watford but he does at least get a deflection off the Southampton man so it will be a throw to uh, Watford uh, deep inside their own half uh, down the left hand side still no changes for Watford so Hodgson's happy with the 11 he's got so far yeah as I said they're all working very hard though so I do think give it five ten minutes and I think Hodgson we will start to see one or two changes well, when, where he makes them changes is interesting for me that will he go for an attacking option to hold the ball up or will he go for more and more defenders they're not blessed of options on the bench of Watford so it'd be interesting to see which players Hodgson wants to use absolutely yes. uh, here come uh, Southampton again though down the right hand side Shea Adams into uh, Walker Peters just about kept alive down that right-hand side. Armstrong tries to play the ball forward. It's uh, cleared back into midfield. A chance now. Dennis squared to Kuchka. Kuchka goes forward, but uh, his pass is uh, picked off. And now Salisu, that's a clearance rather than a pass, just thunders a long ball down the middle, straight into the arms of uh, Ben Foster. And that's, of course, what Arsene Hootel doesn't want to see is uh, his side giving possession away for free. Yeah, I think Salisu had a really poor game, to be honest. I don't want to criticise anyone, of course, but I think Salisu, every time he's had the ball at the back, he's looked so uncomfortable with it. And every time he's been put under pressure, I think Watford have really like made the most of it. Well, yeah, he's done his best work going forward, really, hasn't he? He's kind of had a couple of good, uh, good headers to try and get uh, Southampton level in this game. As uh, it's a throw on to uh, Southampton now down the left hand side. It's still inside their own half though. And we're at 68 minutes. We've gone, uh, we're at the uh, three quarter stage of this game. It is Southampton 1, uh, Watford 2. And it will be sound to take us through to full time. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul. And it's Watford who have possession now. Play the ball forward towards Pedro Pedro, but it will be cleared away. And the ball just battling the midfield. Sissoko wins it. And they send flicked on. Jao Pedro takes it in well. He's going to be surely crowded out. No, he's done well. He's played the ball forward to Dennis. And Dennis now on the right-hand side. Chance for him to maybe cross. He's into the penalty area. Dennis cuts it back. Jao Pedro. Oh, in the end, it's a really poor effort. Not really sure what he's trying to do there. Jao Pedro, a cross or shot. But it's in the end gone out for a goal kick. And Watford with a chance. But in the end, unable to do anything they, with they, it. These half chances that Watford get, they've got to try and capitalise. Because a third goal here really does put them in a commanding position. And so he looks up sees that, that, that João Pedro is there and as you say it's, it's not 
accurate enough to be a, a shot and it's far too away from a teammate to be across. Here comes Southampton though. Elianusi's delivery, it's in, it's going to be cleared away by Samia, back to Elianusi. And he takes it in, going to shoot with his right foot as he's crossed instead, it's going to go over the top. Wrong option then maybe for Elianusi, maybe a cross wasn't bad, but he's gone deep to the back post and in the end it goes out. But other than his goal, he's had a very quiet game really, Elianusi, and that there, uh, just, just not quite what he needed. Yeah, the, the creative players for Southampton this afternoon have been quiet. Elianusi's been quiet. Uh, Armstrong, Stuart Armstrong, we barely mentioned him other than that one good ball he put in for, uh, for Walker-Peters. And actually, Walker-Peters has probably been one of the most threatening players for Southampton down that right-hand side this afternoon. And even he's seen less of the ball in this second half so it, it's just been a, a below par performance with some of the big Southampton players today absolutely has it's going to be Ben Foster to take a goal kick 20 minutes to go let's do unofficial off tube studio commentary what Southampton won Watford 2 Watford this will be a massive three points for them Dennis does well to keep the ball there and he plays in Feminier on the right hand side chance for him to maybe cross he does it's a good delivery it's headed away by Salisu and then Armstrong can further bring it clear. But no, he's actually given it away. It's Kuchka. Kuchka shoots. It's saved by Forster. But that was certainly an opportunity. But in the end, the former ring keeper beats it away. And in the end, it's going to be Southampton who get the throw as well. That was an opportunity. And Forster keeps Southampton in the game. He does, yes. This ball is uh, well miscontrolled by uh, Stuart Armstrong at the edge of his own box. Kuchka with a, uh, a right-footed effort which uh, needed the save in the end. Salisu was there as well, but uh, it does look as though it eluded Salisu and then uh, Foster with the save. Well, it's a kind of good height for the goalkeeper. He does well enough to push it away, it's got to be said. And I think Watford, as you say, have got to make the most of these opportunities when they come. It's Brozier on the ball now for Southampton. Is he fouled there? He surely is by, I believe it's by Cavasele with the foul. And it will, Samir, my apologies, with the foul. And that will be a, th a free kick deep in the Southampton half. But, I mean, the game, as you say, 20 minutes to go. I think so Watford will be happy with the way they've played in this second half, really. The fact they've not been under too much pressure. And, if anything, they've arguably had some of the better chances to get a third goal than Southampton have to get a second. But uh, there's still 20 minutes to go. And, like I say, Watford will naturally drop back a bit deeper. It's still, it's still only a one-goal lead, isn't it? But uh, for what I think uh, the, this second half has shown is that Southampton are still off the pace. And Watford really are up for it uh, in this game and just perhaps just lacking that little bit of quality with those few half chances that they have created. Perot goes forward to Adams. Adams takes it in, plays it back to Ward Prowse just in the centre. He's got options. He plays the ball back out to Perot. Perot's delivery. Good one as well. Oh, it just about eludes Brozier. It's a good delivery in the end. Foster can get there and gratefully claim a good cross that by Perot, causing that causing the Watford defence some issues, but Foster came out well in the end and got there. He did. It was one of those balls that could have just uh, caused a bit of a problem for Foster, but he watched it all the way in, and it's a long clearance from him now, straight down the left-hand side. It's headed away by Bednarek. Ball's won back by Walker-Peters, and it's going to be a throw-in going in the favour of, of Southampton, played off Kamara by Armstrong. Bednarek takes the throw. It's well over the head of Adams, though, and uh, Cavasele can get there before Brozier. He just puts it into touch, and I think it says that Watford will naturally continue to drop back, really, and uh, they're just going to have to rely on the grateful counter-attack, which has served them well in the game so far, but uh, that's what they're going to have to do if they are to see this one over the line. What a massive three points this would be for Roy Hodgson's side. It'll be their second win in 18 games. Throw in taken, it's gone back to Oriol Romeo. It really does seem like he has dropped back into a back three at this point. Salisu just inside the D, he goes back to Romeo. And Romeo looking for options, he just goes short to Jan Bednarek. And then Romeo gets it back. This ball in the Southampton half for the time being, which is where Watford won't particularly mind it. Salisu comes out to Elianusi. He's got a couple of options, he's... Uh, Continues to go forward, he finds Brozier, he gets the ball back, Elianusi in the end, it runs away from him though, and Suzuka can get there, but Elianusi showing good tenacity to win it back. And then Salisu finds Romeo, who's been close down, Watford players really are pressing and working tirelessly to try and get this one over the line, Armstrong then plays it off. Hernandez, and that will be a throw into Southampton, and you can't fault Watford's work rate. They really are closing at Southampton on every occasion. They are. They, that, you have to do. You have to give credit to Watford for the way that they have uh, been resolute in trying to stop Southampton, and they're stopping them high up the field as well. There hasn't been that much work for uh, for Ben Foster really, uh, an attacking midfield change now, and a tactical change as well. Because as we mentioned, Romeo was playing in a back three. He's off now to be replaced by Nathan Redmond. Yeah, Nathan Redmond, very much more a goal threat, you can say, uh, to come on. I think there may be a couple of players that are bought on before. Uh, the English winger though, Redmond, but uh, an interesting one nonetheless, and Redmond of course does have a bit of a goal for it, maybe Theo Walcott not quite fit enough to uh, get 15 minutes in the tank, he actually recovered from an injury, throw into Che Adams, 
Taken down now by Brozier. Brozier into the penalty area across to the outside of his boot. It's cleared away though by Cabasele. Sizoko then can flick it on. And here's Hernandez who can try and bring it forward. Watford do have options here as well. Ball's played well through to Dennis. Dennis up against Benderet. Dennis gets there first. Dennis approaching the penalty area. Dennis. Black to Hernandez on his hat-trick. Shoots. Oh, he's got it wrong. It's way over the crossbar. But another chance for Watford on the break. Unable to take it. And Hernandez's reaction on our screen says it all. He thinks he should have done better. He should have done better. And uh, it's almost like he's, he's, he's got back at João Pedro, who had a very poor shot in the first half when he could have passed to Hernandez. This time, it should have been the other way around. João Pedro completely unmarked over on the right-hand side of the penalty area. And Hernandez went for a shot, which in the end was skyward. Yeah, very much skyward. Play forward into Che Adams by Walker-Peters. Flicked on in the end. It's going to be cleared away though and here comes Abamps and again a bit of a slip there and oh it's good defending though by Kuchka as he wins the ball back off Armstrong ball forward now and that's surely a foul it's quite Bednarek in the open there I think actually Bednarek doesn't seem too well pleased with that but he surely like he did catch his man there Dennis and uh, it's going to be a yellow card it is going to be a yellow yeah, card yeah book, booking here for the uh, Polish international just a little bit of uh, an update from other uh, games elsewhere uh, big big goal at uh, the London Stadium West Ham take the lead against Aston Villa it's a big goal not just because it's a big goal in the game but Andrei Yarmolenko of course uh, the Ukrainian international who, who had a, a week off uh, just for, for personal reasons of course with everything that's been happening uh, he comes off the bench uh, for Mikhail Antonio and scores that goal for, uh, for West Ham and there has been a penalty award awarded to Norwich City at uh, Ellen Road at this stage we're just getting information that it's a penalty so we don't know yet uh, whether or not VAR is going to overturn it whether or not Norwich are going to convert it but in any case we've got a break in play here after that strong challenge from uh, Bednarek uh, just needs a little bit of time here now does Dennis to get back on his feet yeah we are having a bit of a water break these water breaks were actually not a water breaks necessarily these breaks actually were quite criticized recently on a uh, on a live broadcast that when there's a break in play at this point of the game, it kind of changes the game. It's like a third half, basically. It was quite criticised. Uh, what's your take on that, anyway, uh, Paul? Do you think, you know, you can't help stoppages happening, of course, injuries, but do you think that maybe going over to the bench should be a bit restricted? I, I th I th I'm, I've got a real bee in my bonnet in terms of how much time is wasted in general, because I think that uh, when you look at um, the fact that football is one of the very few sports that has a continuous clock, and you never really get all the time back that you lose for, for free. I mean, I, I remember there was a time when Sky Sports used to indicate how much time the ball spends in play, and it was on average about 30 minutes. So we actually should have about 15 minutes of injury time, even when it's just free kicks, goal kicks, and corner kicks that, that, that you lose all the time for. So I think anything that can be done to speed the game up has to be done because uh, top professionals actually spend quite a lot of time avoiding playing, you have to say. So the ball was played forward. We are back underway from Watford. It was uh, Samia who played it forward of his left foot, but in the end it went out of play. And Southampton can rebuild from a goal kick. And Salisu has it now and plays it to Perot on the left-hand side. Ball back with Salis, who has been a change. You imagine Southampton have gone back to a, a back four. Now Romeo has left the field. Jan Bednarek was booked, of course, as uh, Paul mentioned for that challenge on Dennis. Here is Walker Peters. He goes back to the Polish international Bednarek. Salisu looking for options again. Watford continuing to press Southampton and make it uncomfortable, and they've given it away. Southampton, but the ball will just go back upfield. It was cleared upfield by Feminier, and Forster will let it run for a goal kick. And I think for Southampton, it hasn't, this pressure hasn't really started on the Watford goal yet. They're not really throwing bodies forward, causing too many issues. And you've got to say, that's got to start sooner rather than later. It does, it does. I mean, we've got uh, 12 minutes to go uh, plus injury time. And I actually think we're going to get a bit of injury time in this second half. Probably four or five minutes already as it stands. So there's still uh, a good uh, over 15 minutes to play in this game. But uh, at the moment, so the way Southampton are set up, they're just not really in an attack mode. They've got to try and get that ball further up the field. Armstrong plays it out to Walker Peters on the far right hand side. He still goes on. Plays to the right hand side again. It's towards Brogia. Brogia won't keep it alive. That's going to go out for a throw in. And uh, just a uh, confirmation, by the way, it's still 1 0 to Leeds United. Yes, yeah, so I've just, just, had, just had confirmation that Stuart Atwell has reviewed the uh, the VA, the decision using uh, the video replay and decided that it wasn't a penalty. So uh, Leeds still leading against uh, Norwich. And it's still goalless at Stamford Bridge between uh, Chelsea and Newcastle. Yes, this victory of Watford are to hang on means they'll only be out of the relegate. They'll only be in the relegation on goal difference. But Everton above them do have three games in hand, and Leeds will be four points above the Hornets as well. So they'll probably be open. Norwich can do them a little bit of a favour and score an equaliser in that one. Salisu plays it forward though. At Southampton are in search of an equaliser here. Walker Peters in the end, his pass is given away, and Watford can once again bring it away with Kamara. He's got options. Goes to the left hand side and finds Dennis. 
Dennis brings it for Watford or committing men forward here as well. Oh, it's a poor ball though by Dennis and that's cheaply given away by Watford. They had quite a promising break on there and in the end uh, they clear it, they give it away and uh, Southampton can win the ball back. They can, yeah, the ball cleared long now and uh, it's going to be uh, back in midfield here for uh, for Watford. But uh, as, as the game draws into the last 10 minutes now, this is where Watford really do have to, uh, to concentrate because any mistake here can really be capitalised on. I'm still a little bit disappointed with uh, Southampton throughout this second half. I just thought that Watford could have been there for the taking after conceding that goal late on in the uh, in the first, but perhaps we need to give more credit to Watford that they are being as uh, they are as organized as they are. I think there's such thing as wanting it more and that is very much a cliche in football, but I do think Watford have just wanted this game more really throughout. They've they've pressed well. I think conceding the goal on half time was a big blow for them, but they've they've done really well to deal with that really. They've not crumbled, they've stuck to their task well and uh, so far they're Well it uh, certainly bodes well for the, for their next few games, doesn't it? I think Roy Hodgson would certainly look at that and, and if they can hold on here, if anything he'll be a little bit frustrated that after today Watford's next game is on the second of April, so they've got a long, long break now. So it's even more important that they maintain it, otherwise they're going to be thinking about a, a defeat in a game where they had a, a two-goal lead at one point. Well, I mean, after that game against Liverpool away as well, so not really a good game to return to, to be honest. But they do still have leads to play at Vicarage Road, which could pretty much be a one of the relegation deciders. But it's uh, Southampton who are coming forward now on the left-hand side. Chance to cross in. It is crossed in. It's going to be cleared away, though, eventually. And again, now Southampton, that, that uh, press forward's got to come sooner rather than later. It's Watford on the attack now, though. As they continue to come forward on the left-hand side is Dennis. Dennis approaching the penalty area. He shoots and he's got options and in the end it's just off target in the end, Dennis. And that's a chance again Watford have actually just wasted. Yeah, Dennis could have perhaps looked up to try and uh, play it square to try and see if maybe there was a, a teammate. He, he looks up and he sees that there's a, a little bit of a gap to get the shots away. But again, if, if he's going to go for goal, he's got to have a little bit more conviction than that. Yeah, Dennis, we do know, he certainly has an eye for goal, nine goals this season for him, but uh, it's not really quite uh, finding the target on that occasion. And it's Southampton who have the ball now, nine minutes to go. It's Southampton one, Watford two, in what's a very, very big game for Watford. I mean, even Southampton, though, they certainly won't want to be on their third straight defeat. Ward-Prowse in possession on the halfway line. He goes back to Jan Bednarek. Bednarek spreads it wide. Walker-Peters pretty much gone to a central midfield position for now. And the ball played back by Brozier to Bednarek. Bednarek plays to the left-hand side. It's well taken in by Perot. And he goes on to Redmond. Barely seen him at all since coming on. Former Norwich City man. Redmond. Finds Ward-Prowse. Ward-Prowse crosses Sissoko, closing down. He's had a fantastic game today, the Watford skipper. He really has worked hard and been everywhere. He really has been the driving force. Here. The drive's not really gone forward much, but I'd say he's been the, the one in midfield who's really <laughs> kept a it captain's steady. performance, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. I think that uh, Sissoko has been a, a solid uh, central midfielder for uh, for Watford uh, this afternoon. Interestingly, the stats identical in terms of shots. Eight efforts from uh, both sides with uh, four each on target. I think that's not too happy. It's Perot, I believe it is. He might have just pushed his man in the back there, Femini. I don't think... Uh, There's not too much in that, though, is there, really? I think that uh, if that if that has been given for the push, then I think that uh, Femini perhaps has got, has got away with one there. So this would be a massive win. They'll play 29 games after this Watford. If they do hang on, they'll be on 22 points. They'll leapfrog Burnley up to 18th. And Everton, of course, losing at the moment. There's a big goal difference, really, between Everton and Watford. Everton on minus 19, Watford on minus 26 as we stand. So... But the Hartford have just got to carry on winning games. But as uh, Paul mentioned, they don't have a game for three weeks after this, and that's Liverpool away. So that's uh, not really what Watford season is going to be defined on. But uh, a game they might actually need to win. But as will Liverpool in their pursuit of the title. Here's Brozier for Southampton. He goes back to Redmond, who plays one forward. Really good ball that as well by Redmond. It's taken in really well as well by Armando Brozier. Walker Peters on the overlap, he finds Walker Peters, cross comes in, it's blocked, very good defending in the end by Kamara, but it will be a corner in Southampton, pressure maybe starting to come. Yeah, this is a bit better from Southampton now, there's a great ball to go from uh, from left to right to try and uh, get that move into the penalty area, Walker Peters though well marshalled by uh, Kamara, out for a, a corner, a couple of the corner kicks from Ward Prowse have been a bit disappointing this afternoon, this needs to be a good one. So Ward Prowse an outswinger from the far right hand side, he goes in, it's going to be headed away again by Watford, Walker Peters... Walker Peters finds Perot. Perot out to Armstrong. Armstrong looking for options. He has to go short and then the ball just back with Salisu. Watford with everyone back behind the ball, keeping a, a shape where it's hard for Southampton to play through. Ball back out to the left hand side. Here's Perot. It's a poor ball, but Redmond will get there. Armstrong. 
He goes forward. It's Adams who takes it in. Is Adams fouled down on the edge of the area? He is fouled. Oh, I think that was a little bit soft. This is a very dangerous position. There's only one man who's going to be eyeing this up, and his name's James Ward Prowse. He's already picked the ball up, and he's already putting the ball down on the uh, on the spot where the free kick's going to be taken from. And let's just have a look here. Oh, Ad Adams is losing his balance as he's trying to control the ball there. I mean, there's a little bit of contact with Kamara, but I'm not sure. I, I think that, uh, I say, a little bit of a sort of wry smile from Kamara there as he puts his arm around Adam saying, yeah, you done me there, mate, and uh, this is now a great chance. The only thing I would say is that if Ward-Prowse could choose where he takes his free kicks from, he'd probably prefer this to be maybe two or three yards further away from goal. Agree. It's very hard to get the, you know, to get it up and down, maybe. Obviously, Watford are going to have many people in the wall as well, and see Ward-Prowse has four goals against Watford in his Premier League career, more than any other team, so it's just, they are his favourite opponent the Hornets but uh, I think as you say that if you are criticising Kamara you've got to say why even try and make the foul when Adams in that position I mean what, why try and grab hold just of him just stand up just stand yeah. up and uh, make it difficult for him to turn but don't give him the excuse to hit the deck I'm absolutely right Yeah, I think that's one thing you can criticise for him Ben Foster lining up that wall barking orders at the wall as you've got to really but what could you imagine and there's Sizoko coming across now I think he's uh, not too happy with something the Watford skipper he's um so he's actually got a yellow card actually and all that as well he must have must be for descent so booking for the Watford captain the Frenchman it's going to be Ward Prowse just literally outside the penalty area Nathan Redmond also there but there's only one man surely who is going to take this and that is Ward Prowse it's uh, very taking him a while though to, to try yeah. and get it just, just as we're waiting for that I can't say that it's gone from bad to worse uh, for Everton there's still a goal down at home to Wolves but now they're playing with 10 men after uh, John Joe Kenny got uh, two uh, yellow cards uh, inside a couple of minutes there yeah big blow for Everton that but that's uh, good news for Watford of course but uh, they've got to uh, hope they can get over the line and they've got a Ward Prowse free kick to deal with here is eventually going to be taken. Here comes Ward Prowse. He hits it. Oh, and it's just over the crossbar. He did get it up and down, but just went over. And you see the Watford players reacting there. They they're very relieved. <laughs> they are very relieved. Yeah, it just sort of flicks the uh, the corner of the net, but on the top of the net, the roof of the net, rather than in the back of the net, uh, as it goes over. And as I say, if he takes that same free kick, same power and, and accuracy, two or three yards further back, I reckon that goes in. Absolutely agree. I think if he's literally say two, three yards, you got it spot on there, Paul. I think that flies into the top corner. It's going to be Josh. King coming on as well for Watford here so we're just over 86 minutes played uh, that's a good that, that could actually be a, a, a very good sort of mental trick there from Roy Hodgson his side are hanging on to a 2-1 lead away from home and with three and a half minutes to go he's not bringing on a defender but he's just uh, taking off a, a left back to bring on a an attacking midfielder or even a forward in, in Josh King it's it's an interesting move I have to say yeah interesting Dennis is off as well though so this may be a double change now like, thinking about this yeah it is going to be Dennis who's actually come off for King actually it looks like so uh, but even so the fact that he's Thinking about changing a forward with a few minutes to go tells me that uh, the Hodgson is still thinking about making sure that, uh, that his players don't start sit sit sitting back too much. And uh, Pablo Fornals, by the way, has made it 2-0 now at West Ham lead against Aston Villa. Here's Walker Peters on the ball as he tries to bring it forward. He gets flashes the halfway line. Ball played back to him. That's going to be given away. And now Watford can come away with Sissoko. Sissoko finds Jao Pedro. Jao Pedro onto King for his first touch, but King doesn't manage to take the ball in, and Southampton can come away with Armstrong. Had a quiet game so far, the Scotsman, but he's still capable of uh, pulling Southampton back into it. He goes forward, and it's a ball on now with Perot on that side. Walker Peters goes forward into Brozier. Brozier has been quiet since coming on at half time, but another player is certainly capable of pulling one back. He's on the right hand side, he's well marshalled by Kamara. Ward Prowse. Ward Prowse finds the Lisa. They've been forced all the way back south. That really has typified Watford's defensive shape. It's so hard to play through. Here's Redmond. Redmond approaching the penalty area. He's in the penalty area now. He's crowded out. It's a ball. It's headed. Oh, and Foster has to make the save off Che Adams. It was quite central, but Foster, you've got to say, fair play to him. And he gets a fist bump from his defender as well. That's the close Southampton have come to an equaliser. It absolutely is. And uh, finally, just a little bit more space here for Southampton. Good work there from uh, Redmond, almost ignoring Perot in that way. That gave him a little bit more space to put a left-footed cross in. Adams does well. Directs it towards goal. But as you say, it wasn't right in the corner. Uh, so uh, Foster able to to make the save as Chelsea take the lead on 90 minutes against Newcastle. Ball in now, it's headed down, it's going to be cleared away though by Femenia. Luckily it fell to him without anyone there. Big, big save that by Foster, but as we did mention, it wasn't quite in the corner, so one you'd probably expect to make. Perot's been closed down, and he might well lose it out as well to King. And will King get there first against Armstrong? I think Armstrong just got back and won the ball. Very much looked like if King had got there, he'd have been gone through and been one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, Southampton committing 
plenty of bodies forward, understandably. So, as Paul mentioned, Chelsea have taken a, a 1 0 lead against Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle. Kai Havertz with the goal there for uh, for Chelsea just takes a bit of the pressure. Of course, it's been a turbulent week for, for Chelsea for uh, obvious reasons, but a great chance in after Southampton as the ball's played into Walker Peters. And that is an excellent challenge once again from uh, Kamara, who then turns to those visiting fans behind the Watford goal just to try and get a bit of extra support. But Kamara's had a good game today. Yeah, I think there might be a VAR check going on here, maybe, for a handball, perhaps. Uh, I mean, if, it's that, if that is given as a handball, I'd be very surprised. I mean, well, certainly Bednarek asking the question, but uh, I would be surprised if Cabaselli uh, gets uh, gets done for this. The referee, I think, is now... Well, VAR is doing an official check. We're getting there the purple screen uh, on our screens now. I mean... Does he know anything I, about I, this? I think there's too many players there to judge that. I mean, yes, his arm's out, but it's not the he's only one there. He's got his back there. to, a, to, to, to the player heading the ball as well. He doesn't even know anything about it. And rightly so, I think, referee saying play on. That's good. I thought the referee goes, look at the monitor. That's going to be given as a penalty. So I'm very glad that he's uh, said that. But yes, so play resumes. 90 minutes or oh, nearly up. I think Ward Prowse getting ready to take this corner, but uh, something's going on, which is stopping him taking it, actually. It's going to be a substitute. Craig yeah, Cathcart. So right, the uh, like. Northern Ireland International now getting uh, ready to come on. It with uh, just injury time to play here. I'm just wondering if this is now going to be a defensive change. It's uh, Kiko oh, Femini, Kiko Femini, Femini like yeah. who is going to be right back for a centre-backs. But uh, Roy Hodgson there, maybe just breaking up the play. I mean, they know we know Watford have a corner, a chance for him to maybe make this change. Well, he's, sort of go, he's going against the grain because there's an old sort of football saying that you shouldn't make defensive changes before a set-piece because it just throws everybody out a little bit. But Cathcart, very experienced, he knows exactly where he needs to go for this uh, set-piece. And we can finally see this Southampton corner. If we can. Ward Prowse with an outswinger. It's delivered in. It's going to be headed. It's Foster who comes to get there. The ball bobbling around. In the end, it's cleared away by Craig Cathcart. His first involvement is to flick it away. And then is Adams fouled there? No, it's cleared away. We're going to get a, a break and play. A bit of a scuffle as well. But Adams, there is, yeah. yeah Adams and Hernandez. Tempers flaring. Kamara comes across in the end. Everything is going to be okay. We're not too sure. Oh, seven added minutes for confirmation. We've already played a we, minute. We thought that. there was going to be quite a yeah. bit. I think we, we've had we've had a number of stoppages. And, uh, in fact, we took about a minute to see that corner kick with Cathcart coming on as well. There was a, uh, a player down in the box after Foster came out to make that punch can tell you a big goal at Ellen Road uh, Kenny McLean on 91 minutes has made it uh, Leeds United 1 Norwich 1 well, so uh, Leeds still looking for their first win under new manager Jesse March that one might well be cheered by the Watford away end as well That's this looks big, serious big though goal. this, uh, the, the, this uh, Southampton player I'm just trying to see who this is is this Brozier who's uh, caught one flush in the face here as he's uh, yeah and he's uh, it looked to me as though they had the, um, the oxygen mask out at one stage it looks like he may be a little bit concussed I'm hoping that's not the case, but it's certainly, uh, as we see from this replay, it's Salisu who heads the ball up, it deflects off a Watford player, and as uh, Foster comes out, it's almost like yeah, the, elbow the elbows, as him. it's gone up to punch I the ball, it's sort of caught uh, Brozier flush in the face there. I think, yeah, I think that's definitely, F Foster's won the ball, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that, we just see a bit of a scuffle happen with Hernandez and Adam's tempers flaring, let's hope he is okay, Brozier, definitely not intentional by Ben Foster, but he has caught him with the elbow, and that will definitely be a sore one, considering Foster was coming out at pace uh, he's still down on the floor Brozier so yeah, he's down and, and the fact he's sort of almost in that recovery position really isn't he sort of lying on his side and the uh, the two Southampton physios well thankfully he's uh, he's back up on his feet but it seems that there's they're, they're putting some cotton into his into one of his nostrils there may well be a, a nosebleed there it doesn't surprise me because uh, Foster in full flight catching it with your elbow you're going to know about that aren't you absolutely are of course and uh, that's going to add even more time on to the added time so we're going to have around about 10-11 Added minutes, but yeah, we were one fans. of the first uh, games to to restart in the second half. It might be one of the last ones to finish at uh, at this rate, as uh, the Chelsea uh, Newcastle game is in their fourth minutes of uh, added time. Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. Ten man Everton trail against Wolves by a goal to nil. It's a one one between Leeds and Norwich. They're into the fourth minute of injury time uh, there as well. And eighty nine minutes. I suppose the uh, the West Ham uh, Villa game is still behind us, but West Ham still lead against uh, Villa by two goals to nil. Forty minutes to go until our uh, next commentary on this service, which will be uh, Arsenal against Leicester City. That yeah, should be a pretty good game, I'm hoping. But uh, yeah, uh, Brozier's off the field now. And uh, thankfully, it's more of a, a nose injury rather than a, than a concussion injury. Well, he obviously won't see it that way, but in terms of the severity, it's not as bad a, an injury. And uh, Shane Long now getting ready to come on here. Well, Shane Long, who holds the record for the fastest ever Premier League goal in this fixture at, at Vicarage Road in um, April 2019. He did score after seven seconds, but he's going to have to score a lot later than that today. 
He is about to come off. The, come on, he'd imagine it might well be for Brozier as well. I think it is for Brozier. So the substitute has been substituted, obviously, but not in uh, normal circumstances, obviously. He's taken a bit of a sore one, Brozier, so he's going to be off. And it is going to be the experienced Republic of Ireland international, Shane Long, to come on for this final few moments. We were already four into the seven, but of course there's going to be about three afterwards. You can imagine... It's going to be taken by Salisu. He's done a lot of long throws in this game. He's going to do another one here into the Watford area. He goes in. It's going to be headed out for a corner by Sizoko. I don't think Sizoko needed to touch that in truth. But it looks like it first. might have just been going straight out anyway. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there could potentially be late goals being scored uh, elsewhere. It looks as though Villa may be getting a, a late goal, which could it be a consolation. Potentially Leeds uh, with a late winner as well. We'll keep an eye on those two games. But here comes the corner kick from Ward Prowse. Whipped into the near post. It's going to be cleared away. And it's going to be another a throw in. Another corner, in fact, for South. Southampton who really are piling the pressure on. I mean, I said so earlier on, Southampton this game might not mean a lot to me, it must do because they are really putting the pressure on here. They don't want to fall to a third straight defeat. Ball in again by Ward Prowse, a decent one. It's flicked away. Armstrong might have looked to get there. He does. He goes back to Redmond. It's given away though, and now Watford can come forward. They've got a couple of options up here. It's Josh King on the overlap. It's Jal Pedro there as well. Here's King. Will he go on? He does go on in the end. His chance may have gone. They've got enough bodies back now, surely. And that's also an overhead kick attempt. I think if he left that to Jao Pedro, um, I think I think if actually loser left that, Jao Pedro probably volleys that in. In the end, his overhead kick attempt is actually probably the worst thing to do there from Loza. It is, yeah. I think Jao Pedro has still got a good chance there. Joe Geldhard, by the way, has scored for Leeds United on 95 minutes. So Leeds potentially now are going to win their first game under Jesse March. Having conceded an injury time, they've now themselves scored an injury time. There. So that's a big, big goal uh, for Leeds United. But here comes Southampton now with Elinusi. Breaks into the box, but that's good covering there uh, from Kuchka to clear that one down the middle. Yeah, Watford had a big chance to kill the game a moment ago, but in the end it was Lauzer who ended up having an overhead kick, which was weak and easily saved. But Southampton now with a chance of an equaliser. Perot finds Armstrong. He goes out to the left-hand side to Elianusi. Elianusi has scored right at the end of the first half. Here we go now, his ball in, it's going to be Foster who comes, and Foster will gratefully get a poor ball from Elianusi, really, no South, no Southampton player attacking it. Foster comes in, claims, and Watford are getting closer to getting over the line, and a massive three points. Yeah, massive, particularly now that Leeds are, are winning their game against Norwich City, and that's seconds away from being over, so uh, if Watford had lost the game today, they would have been even further adrift. Roy Hodgson getting ready to make another substitute, I think that was uh, uh, Swedish international Ken Semmer getting ready to come on, so he's a, a sort of left-back, right-back, can also play in a more attacking position, as well. It's a poor ball forward back and that goes out but that does allow Watford to make the change and it is the two goal hero Hernandez. Kuchovinasi will be leaving the field and coming on in his place will be Ken Semmer. I think Hernandez you cannot fault him really right now he is the match winner he's worked tirelessly all game he's got to be an obvious shout for man of the match yeah I think so I mean it's two massive goals for uh, for Watford in the first half and uh, now just seconds to go uh, in the game Ken Semmer is on uh, Roy Hodgson a quick warm handshake there with his uh, double goal scorer as well we've had the seven minutes of injury time but we can probably expect another two to be added on, to, on top of that yeah the injury to Broja who was eventually forced off the reason for that Ward Prowse plays it forward it's uh, Adams who tries to get there he flicks it on Long gets there Long carries on he goes can go out to Redmond here he does Redmond on the edge of the area he goes for it it's deflected it's going to be in the grateful arms of Foster and the Watford fans we see on our screens behind clapping that one because I think Redmond could have done a bit better though there really lacked a bit of urgency when he got the ball and it was quite wasteful yeah and it wasn't there wasn't too much conviction in what he did there either he could have tried to just been uh, put, put a little bit more power into that uh, just to try and get a little bit more pressure on uh, Ben Foster uh, the game is uh, finished now at uh, Stamford Bridge Chelsea won Newcastle no it's finished at Goodison Park Ever to nil Wolves 1 and it's finished to Ellen Road Leeds United 2 Norwich City 1 so uh, results that all affect Watford you have to say but they're going forward again here now here we go it's uh, Semmer on the ball he's lost out though and there might have been a foul in there not given Sissoko can play it through to King or oh, his touch is poor and then Salis who can clear the referee got to get out the way here of Kutchka he does and now Cathcart playing in a right back position it looks like he spreads it out to Kamara who can flick it on to Giao Pedro he goes to take it and he slips in the end though Pedro and that allows Bednarek to clear up field but the Watford will gratefully have possession but they've cleared it away though with Samir and that will be a throw and I think Samir's another shot for man of the match I think he's been exceptional at the back for the Hornets the he's been very good yeah I've been impressed first time I've seen Samir playing in a full game and uh, I've been impressed with him I think that uh, him and Cabaselli have formed a good little partnership there in central defence. Really good work by Lauza wins this side of throw in. We've now played 98 and a half minutes at St Mary's. 
And I think Watford are very nearly there. I think Roy Hodgson knows that this will be a massive, massive three points for him. A game that winning away at Southampton is certainly not an easy task, really. You can argue they're playing them at the right time with Southampton's recent run of form. But full credit to Watford if they can come away here with three points. Thrown forward is taken in by King. King goes into the penalty area and it's going to be put behind for a corner, is it? It is a corner and that will be great news for Watford. It is great news for, for Watford because uh, surely by the time this corner kick is taken and uh, cleared or indeed dealt with, we're going to have, uh, we would have had a, a full 10 minutes of uh, injury time in this uh, second half and I think the referee is just coming across here to make sure that Watford uh, don't take too long with this short corner. Yeah, this will be only Watford's fourth away win of the season if they hang on here, Josh King. Has it in that corner area. He's coming cleared away though. And Southampton can come clear. Can they? No. It's going to be a throw in to Watford. As much to Nathan Redmond's disbelief. I think Redmond could have at least attempted to keep that ball in there. Because he wasn't sure. But it is Watford who are nearly there. Roy Hodgson. Very much looking like he's ready to celebration on the touchline. And the throw in's going to be taken by Kamara. The referee <laughs> hurrying him up. Yeah, well the Watford players are now looking at each other. Saying who should take this throw. They're doing what they can just to waste another couple of seconds. Ball's flicked back into the area. But Bednarek can clear the full time whistle. Surely going to go any moment now. It's flicked up by Ward Prowse. It's headed back away by Samia. It's taken in by Elinou. See, is that a faster throw in again? It's gone Watford's way. I think again Watford, they're surely there. The ball's down their end of the field. They're doing everything right. And we said at half time, it's going to be difficult for Watford to hang on here, really, with the fact that they've conceded right on half time. But they've done a great job of it, second half. They off. have, yeah. I've been a little bit disappointed with Southampton at times in this second half. But in, in the end, they have actually got into the game a little bit more. And this has been good from, uh, from Roy Hodgson's side in terms of how they've been organised. Must admit, I think that the referee's probably over, overkilling it a little bit with the uh, injury time. But Another look at the uh, at the watch there from Graham Scott, and that could be it now. It could well be it now. The ball comes forward. Yep, and the full-time whistle has now blown, it looks like. It, well, it's going to be blown any moment. Loser's down at the moment. I think the referee is still. Now the referee has blown the full-time whistle, and that will bring us to the end. A massive three points for Watford at St Mary's. A Two goals in the first half by Cucho Hernandez and then Elianuzzi pulling one back on our time but Watford were able to hang on in the second half. They're now only in the relegation zone on goal difference and Southampton fall to their third straight defeat. Final score, Southampton 1, Watford 2.